In 1921, the Duke of Bedford, Marquess of Tavistock, the 11th Duke, gave a build into the Institute to study the effects of shell shock on British troops who survived World War I. Its purpose was to establish the breaking point of men under stress, under the direction of the British Army Bureau of Psychological Warfare, commanded by Sir John Rawlings Rees. The Tavistock Institute is unusual. There's certainly a range of disciplines in its portfolio to bring about cultural change and behaviours through social engineering. The Duke of Bedford during the swinging 60s was John Ian Robert Russell. He was the 13th Duke of Bedford, a British peer and writer, who held the title Marquess of Tavistock between 1940 and 1953. By kind permission of His Grace, the Festival of the Flower Children took place in the grounds of his Woburn Abbey House during the summer of 1967. Rather than the three-day non-stop happening, it was billed as, but more of a cash-in than the love-in, according to the Daily Mirror. The promoters really pushed the whole beautiful people and love-in angle. Steve Marriott belted out the Small Faces hits on the Saturday night. Eric Burden and the Animals were the star attractions on the Sunday night. Eric treated the crowd to a little sermon on how they should love each other. Everyone cheered politely, and Eric sang San Francisco Nights. Well, he was one of the few in attendance that had been to the epicentre of the Summer of Love, and had played at the mother of all festivals, Monterey, the American three-day pop festival. Making him something of an ambassador come travel advisor for the west coast of America. Some might wonder what the Bee Gees were doing on the bill, but this wasn't the Saturday Night Fever Bee Gees back then. In fact, their first UK album had been released a few weeks earlier on the 14th of July, which had a psychedelic sound to it, just like most bands' output had at the time. But no, there were no heavy acid head bands playing at the Duke's Bash. It could hardly be considered as the English Monterey, the American festival being held two months earlier in June that year. In contrast, this event received terrible reviews from the music press, and with no alcohol on site, and the local pubs unwilling to serve flower children, the event was described as woe more by the NME, and reported a three-day frolic billed as the world's largest love-in, admission one pound per day. More than 12,000 tinkling hippies and mods made the sad scene, went away unloved, unstoned and unmoved by the 15 jangling psychedelic bands. Though the flower children wilted, the Duke gathered £5,000 net out of the loving, and the Duchess was pretty jolted herself. I was away from Woburn, she said. I thought these people were holding a flower festival. So much for the counterculture. No sex, drugs and rock and roll. No Tavistock Institute inspired LSD crowd control operation either at Woburn. But with food sold for extortionate prices, the hippies learned the market values of supply and demand. With the boy-girl ratio at five to one, there wasn't much free love or sex going on. And while 200 constables prowled the premises in search of pot, the drug part of sex, drugs and rock and roll was also a frustrated affair. So that just left rock and roll, except it was the jangling psychedelic variety. It's not easy being a duke with a vast estate and a huge house filled with treasures, especially when it comes to finding the money to maintain it all. It becomes even more of a problem when your daddy never made any provision, but left you instead with a huge inheritance tax 
to pay upon his demise. What should a poor duke do to raise some money? Thankfully for the teenage audience, hot dogs, ice cream and tea were on sale at the Festival of the Flower Children, charging vendors for their pitch being another means for the Duke to capitalise on the event. Which is just as well because when his father died in 1953, the Duke was exposed to death duties of $14 million. Instead of handing the family estates over to the National Trust, he kept ownership and was the first Duke to open to the public the family seat and open Woburn Abbey to the public for the first time in 1955. It soon gained visitors and other amusements were added, including Woburn Safari Park on the grounds of the Abbey in 1970. This swinging 60s Duke of Bedford and his third wife and last Duchess became tax exiles in 1974, eventually settling in Monaco. He died in Santa Fe, New Mexico in 2002. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Is the Duke of Bedford's family motto.